Good morning YouTube. Thanks for coming back to the channel guys. It's time for a new deck. Let's get to it. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Alright guys, you guys have been following the channel for a while, you've seen this deck, but if you haven't, we bought this house that was 20 plus years old and the deck that was here was made with logs just stuck in the ground. And uh, you can see this thing is leaning a little bit, pretty dangerous. It's time to get rid of this thing. So this wood was completely rotted. You can see the stuff, I'm taking this to the burn pile. It just basically fell over. Didn't even get a chance to film it, it fell over so fast. So we pulled this thing apart and uh, gonna be building a deck. It's gonna be 10 feet wide by 20 feet long. And then those steps that I made when I made those log stairs, if you guys haven't seen that video, go check that out. That was a lot of fun. I'm gonna reuse those, put those, they're just gonna come out a little bit further. But uh, yeah, I need to do some backfilling first. I've got some, um, I've got some fill in this dump truck that I'm gonna be putting in here. I'm gonna be smoothing this out and bringing this grade up. So that way it's uh, sloped away from the house just a little bit. And uh, then I'm gonna drill some holes. So let's get to it. You know, I don't know what it is. There is just something satisfying about watching a machine work. And, but I don't know, a lot of you guys don't want to see a machine working the whole time. You want to see how to build this deck. So we're going to walk you through every step of the way on building this deck. And I'm building it with logs, by the way. So hopefully this is something that uh, you guys can enjoy. And uh, if I did anything wrong, make sure you leave a comment. Enjoy, guys. All right, I've got the grade up. It is actually gonna be level right through till about right here, and then it's gonna slope off to the lower side of the house right here. And I got this all nice and packed. It is definitely wet, but it's packed nice and tight. So now it's gonna start, uh, now we're gonna start laying this sucker out. So 22.4 feet will give me my diagonal to make sure that I have this thing totally square. All right, guys, I've got this laid out. The exact measurements are gonna be 10. The deck's gonna be exactly 10 by 20. That'll be the outside edge. Now, my pillars are gonna go inset a little bit. I want this to cantilever out about, an, about a foot. And so that log is gonna be about, I think it's about 10 inches, 12 inches. So I need to actually set, I need to dig my pillars inside of here. But if you guys know what the Pythagorean theorem is, A squared plus B squared will equal C squared. So I want to get the diagonal right here to check how square this is. I measured 22.4, which is about 22 and 5 inches in the diagonal. And it actually moved everything over about 3 inches. That's the way to make sure that you're square. I'm exactly 10 feet off the building, and th then here is 20 feet. So then I have my 10 foot mark, and this is 10 feet from the building. So now I'm perfectly square. I will double check myself, do with this diagonal right here, and make sure. But yeah, I should be nice and square now. All right, guys, let's have a quick conversation about frost depth. I'm going to try and walk you guys through some of all of the uh, building techniques here and uh, the proper way to do this. And of course, if I mess up, I trust all you guys will leave a comment and tell me where I screwed something up. But I've been through this uh, patio build before, learned my lesson on a number of things, and hoping to incorporate all of those lessons into this deck build. So let's get started on, on frost depth. You can go to the internet, and there's an interactive map. You can even type in your zip code to find out what your frost line or your frost depth is. Here in Idaho, it's about 31 inches. What does that mean? That means that the groundwater that is in the ground freezes during a hard freeze, which is weeks and weeks of extended 
zero degrees or below freezing, really. And that fr frozen water creeps down and freezes lower and lower into the, into the ground. And it goes down to a maximum depth in every state. Warmer states, it doesn't go very far. This one is 31 inches. What does that mean for frost depth? Well, when that becomes important is in the spring during the breakup, during the thaw. What you have, because water expands when it freezes, is if you don't have your footings or your pylons or your poles below that frost line, water freezes below it, and when it freezes, it expands and pushes up. And then in the springtime, when things thaw out and refreeze, thaw out and refreeze, it's called the, the spring heave thaw, okay? So you don't want to be building a deck on top of the frost line and then have the, th the, the, the heave thaw push your footings and make that deck move up and down or your house or whatever it is that you're building. So you want to make sure that those footings are below the frost line or the frost depth. Here in Idaho, it's 31 inches. I'm going to be digging these holes at 36 inches. Let's get started. Okay, guys, so now I've got this all filled in. I got the deck taken down, got the roof off, and I've got my temporary construction stairs in place. So now it's time to start drilling the holes and set up my concrete tubes for my pillars, for my foundation, for my footings for the deck. So let's take a look at something really quick, uh, something that really helps me to build something. So guys, it really helps me to draw something out. You don't have the money for an architect or a uh, designer or whatever, and you can get out a pencil and a, and a ruler, and these are just sketches. I don't even use a ruler, but at least it, it, it helps me figure out what my measurements are. So I'm going to do this kind of upside down in a way. I'm using the dimensions of what the deck lumber is going to be, plus what the dimension of my log, my horizontal beam is going to be, and then the horizontal piece right here is going to be adjustable. And that, the distance from the top of the concrete to all of this lumber has to fit underneath this bottom log. Now it's going to come right to the very, very top of this. It's not going to go any higher than this. So that's where the top of the deck I want to end. Now I'm going to have to cover this with some more uh, house wrap, some moisture barrier. Uh, you have to put that behind the ledger, but we'll get to that tomorrow. For right now, what we need to do is I need to double check all my measurements. I've got the outside measurement of the deck. It's going to be 10 by 20 finished size. Okay, so that's important to know. Now I'm going to do is a little bit of layout right here based on how I want this thing to look. Let's go back to the drawing again really quick. This is kind of an idea of what it's going to look like as far as distance with the door and the ladder. These are going to be covered with rock veneer at some point, but that's going to be the side view. And then looking down at the top view, I want this horizontal beam to be set back a little bit with the deck cantilevered over about a foot, which means I need to drill these holes back, not at the 10 foot mark. So let's get that going. All right, you guys remember in the last little clip where I measured these uh, and I made sure that this corner point was square with the building by using the Pythagorean theorem and getting it square. So now, since this is going to be my finished end, and I want this to be a foot over. That means that my, and then that my horizontal uh, log is going to be a foot thick. So that means, and I'm going to be drilling actually an 18 inch hole, but the hole is going to be 18 inches, but the pillar that comes out of the ground is only going to be a 12 inch. So that means that I don't want to drill my hole at the one foot mark. I need to drill the middle of the hole. If I want the edge of my beam, and my, my, my pole to be here. And if it's a 12 inch pole, I need to drill that hole right here. I also want that pole to be uh, on the inside of the outside edge of the deck. So not only do I need to drill it six inches back here, but I need to drill it six inches over here. So looking at this line right here, I'll make a little mark in the, in the, in the rock here. And I need to go six inches, so right about here. Now this is going to be the center of the deck right here, and I want that pole to be centered on there. So if I go two feet, uh, one foot, and then center of that pole is going to be right here.
Okay, there's going to be the corner. And if you guys look at my marks, it's going to be right on the inside of the outside edge. My horizontal is going to stick out about a foot, but I want the main pillar to be under the deck. And then it's a foot inside the outside. Same thing as the center. And then same thing on the other end. All right, let's get to drilling. Okay, I've got two holes drilled and uh, they came out really, really good. Now it's a 12 inch hole and I'm going to go 18 inches. So I got to dig the rest out by hand, which is fine. This is actually going to jump start me and really uh, get ahead of the digging. However, this one, I am going to double check. I'm going to triple check myself because of that. And then there is our water line. And the water line, I believe, goes straight into, as well as the electrical, straight into the house. But I'm going to go double check that to make sure that for some crazy reason they didn't bring it all the way over here and over. So grab my tape measure and see where the water line and the electrical goes through the foundation. All right, here's our pressure tank and you can see the water line goes up all the way across here. And then you can see it dives down and it goes through the foundation right there. So that is about six feet from the corner of the house. And then you can see the electrical line also goes right through the foundation as well. So I am well within that hole I'm drawing is at least 10 feet past over there. So. All right, guys, I've got the holes all dug out. One thing I'm going to tell you guys, I made this mistake a long time ago, is I didn't double check my holes and make sure they were centered perfectly. So, oh, so these, this hole should stick out about two inches past the 20 foot mark, which it does, uh, because these are 16 inch holes. I was going to go 18. I said, yeah, 16 is fine. This one should be centered right at 10. And as you guys can see, I'm off. And being a 16 inch hole, I've got about two inches that I need to cut on this side. And I also had it too far, too far this way. I had to go that way just a little bit. So I need to trim this out just a little bit to make sure that this thing is centered. All right guys, so what would really be cool is if I had an 18 inch auger bit for that. And that would have really made things a lot quicker and faster. But as all I have is a 12 inch, someday I'll have the 18. So I'm going to shave this out. I'm actually going to go about 16. That should be plenty big. And then the, the, um, the pillar that's going to come out of the ground is going to be a 12 inch. So it's going to be 16 inch all the way in the ground, 36 inches deep. And then coming out of the ground will be 12 inch and that's going to support the log. All right, I got my laser level on here. Right there. Okay, so 45 inches below that line. So that is four foot four. So I got 45 inches and I'm actually going to take an inch off because I want it to slope out. So one eighth of an inch for every foot. Since I have 10 feet, that makes one and a quarter inches that I need to drop this side so that I'll have a little bit of slope away from the house for drainage. All right, guys. So now we have my in beds. This is what the logs, this is what the logs are going to be connected to. I'm going to drill a hole through the middle of the log and then I'm going to have a bolt that goes all the way through. So with the hole in the middle of the log, this thing will not slide side to side. And then to actually hold it down to this in bed, I'm going to have a bolt that goes all the way through the log, through the holes I've already pre-drilled. So these are my in beds. They're 18 inch long pieces of rebar. Those are going to sit right on top of this bad boy. And it's all going to be joined together, locked together. So, all right. So now I got that one level. I got that one level. And I'm going to come back through and I'm going to put other cross pieces across on the sides to really keep these things nice and, and solid. And then I'm going to start filling these with concrete with the rebar cages in there. And I'll come back in and put these on after the fact, after I've already filled these holes with most of the concrete. And then make sure that I have these things leveled up right where they're supposed to be at. Now I've got to do this last one, get this thing plumbed up, and uh, I'll be starting to mix concrete. Okay, guys, I've got these things all filled up. I am going to double check my elevation and make sure I'm exactly 46 inches below where I need to be. So... This is where the laser comes in super, super handy. And perfect. And right here. Perfect. 
I'm right on the money. That's the nice thing about having a laser is you can make sure these things are dialed in perfect. And I already measured from the building. I'm exactly centered at eight foot, six inches all the way across. Put the embeds in and we'll be ready to go.